Hello everyone and welcome to this, another episode of 2D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanis. In the last episode, we went through and we prepared our character and our assets and our animator uh, for the character jump. And today, it's going to be another coding lesson. We haven't done a whole lot of code yet. We've only done limited code. Uh, and there's not a whole lot of code to go in this either. So don't be afraid if you guys are saying, oh my god, not coding. Yep, we're going to be doing some coding here, but there's not very much to it, to be honest. Not very much at all. Uh, so. What we're going to do is we are going to start our coding right now. We're not going to actually add additional uh, an additional thing. Let's click on our character right here. We're not going to actually add an additional script to our character. Uh, this whole all this new code is going to go into our player controller. Uh, we're going to add it directly to that. We've already got our player controller up and running. Uh, it's used to move our character around, and this is more. This is additional movement. So, kind of any input that we're going to be we're going to be giving this character, I want to add into the player controller script. So, we're not going to create a new con uh, new script at all. Let me just drag this over so you guys can see it. Uh, boop. All right, there is our uh, original uh, player controller. We're gonna we're gonna make the changes to this directly. We're gonna add a couple of variables that are gonna help us control jumping. Uh, so let's actually uh, let's just go right in. We'll just add it right here. Those are movement variables. Um, let's call these ones here our um, jumping variables. I'm just labeling this so we know variables. It's a good idea to um, to comment your code uh, in case you have to hand this off. Let's say that you want uh, someone in your class to take a look at your code, or you you know you want your buddy to take a look at it. If you've gone in and you've commented it well, at least uh, they'll be able to go through and see what you're trying to do without having to try and decipher your 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 crazy code. All right, so there's a couple of things that we're going to add uh, for our jumping. The first thing we're going to add is a bool. Uh, our bool, uh, it's a private bool, it's fine, and we're going to call it uh, grounded. And we're going to say that's equal to uh, false to start off with. Uh, what we'll do is we'll start off with our character a little bit off the ground. Uh, and he'll fall like he's kind of jumping out of the ship. Okay, so uh, bool grounded equals false. And this is what we're going to be using to, to uh, transfer back and forth uh, from our blend tree and to our, our landing animation. Okay, our bool. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, I mentioned that we were going to use a little tiny circle. We're going to draw a little tiny circle under our character's feet, uh, you know, every, every uh, frame. Uh, and make sure that we are still in contact with the ground or no longer in contact with the ground. All right. To do that, we have to know how big the radius is going to be of that little circle. We might as well put it in here uh, we'll, so we can change it if we need to without having to go into the code itself. Um, let's make our, let's call it a uh, float. We'll call it uh, ground. Let's call it something everyone knows. Ground check circle. That sounds uh, pretty good. Yeah, ground check radius, maybe? Radius. That's fine. Ground check radius. So, so how big is the circle we're creating uh, to check and see if we're doing it? I've decided to go with the circle method rather than uh, the the uh, um, ray. Uh, you can decide either way, though. Uh, you can decide either way. They will both, I think, amount to pretty much the same thing. Uh, I'm going to pick a random number here, uh, zero decimal to float. Uh, we can change that later on if it's too big or too small. All right. Uh, now, uh, in order, what we're going to use, we're going to be using a, um, like I said, the circle to be able to to check and see uh, if we're on the ground. And it's it's basically a, a physics uh, 2D function called overlap circle. And overlap circle will take a number of parameters. It's going to check, it's going to uh, take the size of the circle you're creating, the position of the circle you're creating, and what layer you're checking to see if you've intersected with. So it's going to give you, it's going to say, you know, what layer are you trying to intersect with? So. <laughs> I just repeated that twice, didn't I? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a number of um, public variables, so we can change this around, uh, a number of public variables that are going to allow us to check those different things. The first thing we're going to check is our public, um, our public ground. Public, no, it's going to be sorry, public float. Uh, no, sorry, not a float. I am lying. A public... Um, uh, I'm drawing a, bla uh, a brain fart here. A layer mask. Layer mask. That's what I want to do. So, right? A public layer mask, and that is going to be what is our ground layer? Our ground layer. Every once in a while, guys, I will space out for a second, and that's because when I quit YouTube uh, uh, about a year ago, my little girls were two years old, 
and they couldn't really be left on their own. Now they are almost three. They're turning three very, very soon, and they're playing in the background, and I have to every once in a while look and see what they're still doing. I'm still a stay-at-home dad. <laughs> So that hasn't changed at all, but I have a little bit more freedom now to be able to do stuff. They play quietly now, and they don't always try and kill each other. So if, if I go through and I space out for a second, guys, I'm really sorry. My main responsibility is still being a stay-at-home dad. All right, so public layer mask, our ground layer. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have to have the location. Like I said, the location where we were going to build uh, this, um, this uh, circle, and it's going to be a transform. Uh, and we've already created our the position, so it's going to be a, a transform, and we're going to call this um, we're going to call this I don't know ground check. All right, ground check. Uh, the last thing we're going to need is we're going to need uh, our the force that we can use, how much we can jump with, how much force we can jump with, uh, and this is going to be a public float, uh, and we'll just call it I don't know jump height. Uh, that should be fine. Our jump height. Uh, I don't think we really need anything else out of there right now. I think that's all the variables we're going to require to be able to actually do this work. So those are our variables that we're going to use. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a... Um, right in here, because it should have been here anyway. We're going to add this into our, uh, into our update. And I know I told you guys before that you should be doing uh, anything to do with physics within the within the fixed update, and and though it probably won't matter, to be honest, it probably won't matter uh, in this situation, because uh, our fixed update is going to run, you know, pretty often, uh, but I want to make sure that I am checking the spacebar, because it's not something you hold down, it's something you press, and you might press it just very, very quickly, and, and though I, I'm sure it's doubtful you could ever miss it, I'm going to add everything to update right here anyway. So there's a couple things we want to check. We want to check if we're grounded, first of all. So are we grounded? grounded and we want to know if the character or sort of the player has actually pressed on uh, the jump button so we already knew how to do this before we're going to use our input dot get axes uh, get axes or in this case yeah get axes boom and the axes we want to use is the it's defined as jump. You guys can go go make sure I showed you in a, a few episodes ago um, how to how to check uh, what your axes were. We're going to be using the jump axes, and if the jump axes, uh, I did this wrong, didn't I? I did. Sorry, I'm missing a parenthesis right here. If our jump axes is greater than zero, uh, then we're going to go inside here. So if we're grounded and the person has pressed the jump button, we want to do something. And what do we want to do? The well, first thing we want to do is we want our animation uh, to switch modes. So we've already defined previously my anim right there. My anim, my it's in my animator. So my anim uh, dot set bool, and we're setting the bool. We already we already created our bools before. We created is grounded. It's right there. Set bool uh, is grounded, and we want to set that. To the to uh, we want to set that to false because what's happening is our character is jumping. So we want to set that to false. Our character is actually going to be leaving the ground here. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to set uh, my RB. So that's our rigid body. We want to set our rigid body. What we want to do is we want to add a force to that rigid body, and we're going to add add force. Basically says basically. Is how a rigid body should be used. When you add a force to a rigid body, it's automatically going to um, push it in some direction. Okay, it's going to add a force and make that rigid body start moving. In this situation, and once again, we're in 2D here, so my RB dot add force. Uh, we are going to add force, and we're going to add a new vector two. It's a 2D vector, just like before. We're only moving in 2D. Uh, we don't want to add anything in the in the x and y because that's being controlled by our movement below uh, but we do want to add in this situation our force that is equal to our jump height all right so we're adding a force to the character that's going to make him move up in the air and the last thing you know what i'm going to move this around a bit we're going to do it like this instead i should have done it like this uh, instead i'm going to go go up above it i'm going to change my grounded right away my grounded right uh where is it where did i add grounded uh 
grounded is false, I'm going to say grounded right here is equal to false. Oops. So I'm setting my grounded to false, and instead of sending false in here, why don't I just send in grounded rather than try and do everything twice. All right, so that is all the code that I'm going to require uh, to be able to um, have this character, the input from the player, uh, be accepted. So the next thing I need to do, the next thing I need to do is I have to actually um, act upon this. So what we've done here is we've said, okay, uh, he's pushing the button and we're on the ground and therefore uh, set my ground to false and jump. All right. Uh, the next thing we're going to take a look at is we are going to have, um, uh, and, and then we've, we've gone through and we, we've set the values in our animator, uh, and we've added the force to the character. So the character's already moving up and down, which is perfect. This is giving me an error here, because I am missing, what am I missing? Why are you giving me an error? Oh, I'm missing a bracket. Boop, right there. Missing a bracket. Okay, all is good. I'm going to save this file. Save. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to go down to my fixed update right down here, and we're going to add a little bit of code in here. Uh, I don't really know why. I don't know if I had to do this. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I don't have to. Anyway, I'll stick with it because <laughs> this is how I wrote it in my test game, and I'm going to write it like this now. I probably didn't have to do it here, but we're going to do it here anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do in, in fixed update right away is I'm going to uh, check if we... if we are ground. I'm not spelling anything right. Grounded. All right. That's the first thing we're going to do. So, grounded uh, is equal to, uh, and I'm doing this wrong. No, I'm not. Okay, sorry. Grounded. Brain fart again. Man, my brain is barely working. I need more sleep, guys. I need more sleep. Grounded is going to be equal to. This is where we're going to create our little circle. This is where we're going to create our little circle. So, is equal to our physics. 2D. Um, we're going to be pulling some in, uh, some uh, some functions out of there. Dot overlap circle. Now I've already I've already talked to you guys about this about what overlap circle was. Basically, what this is going to do is going to draw a little tiny circle, uh, and it's going to check a number of things. When I add in my when I add in my parentheses there, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to take a vector 2D, which is the point at uh, which this is going to be drawn, uh, and we are going to draw it at uh, we're going to draw this at uh, ground check. So what do we call it up here? Make sure. Yeah, ground check. Uh, ground check dot position. Okay, great. Ground check dot position. The next thing it's going to take is the radius. How? What's what's the size of this? Um, what's the size of this circle? And the size of the circle is going to be. Uh, we've already set it up here. Is going to be our ground check radius. So. We're going to add that in. Ground, oops, ground, check radius. The last thing that this is going to take is a layer that it's going to be acted on. Uh, which, which layer are we actually add, uh, acting on? And we're going to be acting on our, this is our layer mask. Our layer mask is going to be uh, ground layer is what we call it at the top. Ground layer. Bam. Ground layer. All right. So this this right here is basically checking, is drawing a circle and checking to see if we have intersected anything. That's what grounded is going to be equal to. If we're intersecting the ground, uh, then, then it's going to say true. And if we're not intersecting the ground, then it's going to say false. All right. So this is going to take uh, care of falling. This is going to take care of falling. Uh, this right here might be a little bit of um, overkill. We probably don't even need to do this. I could check it without it. But this immediately sets ground to false, and this sets ground to false after uh, each fixed update. Uh, this one here is going to occur uh, more often than this one down here, as I've already mentioned because of the timing between each of the, each of the frames. So the last thing we're going to do right down here is we're going to reset our bool my anim set bool because if we're not grounded and we're falling uh, I should say check see if we're grounded if no then we are falling I'm gonna write that in there to make sure that anyone uh, whoever sees this code knows why I did it alright and uh, the last thing we're gonna do the actual jumping code uh, the actual jumping code is we're gonna say my Anim. Every frame we're going to do this, not just in and not in an if statement. Every frame we do this. My anim dot set float. Now, uh, I told you that we're going to 
being grounded or not grounding is what moves us into our into our blend tree or out of our blend tree. But inside of the blend tree, we're looking at the vertical speed. Remember vertical speed, and vertical speed determines uh, where and what which state we're in. Okay, so we are going to add, we're going to uh, update this float, this vertical speed. Uh, so I'm going to say quotations vertical speed and quotations uh, and comma. And what we're going to set that to is the velocity, each, each update, each fixed update, the velocity of our, our rigid body in the vertical uh, direction. My rb dot velocity dot y. So it's only looking at, it's only setting it to the value of the velocity in the, in the y direction. So it's basically the vertical velocity of the uh, rigid body. And that is all we should need to do. All right, so I'm going to say file, and I'm going to say save, and then I'm going to check this out. First of all, let's see, do we get any errors? No errors so far, so that's pretty good. Go back to our scene. This guy should fall, and when he falls, he should immediately, let's maximize it on play, he should immediately go into the fall. Boom, and he did. Now, he didn't land, so something went wrong with my landing. Maybe my circle is too small, uh, or maybe the exit time's too long. I'll have to go and check. All right, let me go check and figure that out. Okay, guys, it was a really stupid mistake, and let's go take a look at it. I realized that as soon as I stopped recording what the mistake was. We, in our character, we have not defined a bunch of things. <laughs> First of all, we haven't defined anything in this player controller, the new stuff we've added. So let's go through that right now. The first thing we're going to do is ground check transform. We know it's this ground check layer. We're just going to click it, drag it, and drop it right there. Boom. So that is where we're drawing our circle. So far, so good. The next thing we're going to do is we need our ground check layer. It's got a drop down here. Click it and say ground. We already know that all of these things down here are ground. And the last thing is we're going to have to determine our uh, jump height. And that is going to depend on a lot of different things. We're going to put a random number basically in there for now uh, and see if we actually get our character moving up and down. Uh, but it's going, to it's going to be based on the gravity and everything else that we've set. We haven't really discussed gravity at this point in time. Uh, but for now, let's, um, let's say jump height of 150. That's a complete guess. All right, so now <laughs> when I hit play, this should work. I'm going to save this file, save my scene, play. Character should go into fall mode and he should land. Perfect. If I press the space bar, jumps, very floaty, and lands. Okay, so this brings me to one last thing that we should check out. So this is working. See, and I, I can still move around and that kind of stuff, but he's extremely floaty and I don't like that. Maybe if you guys are making a space game, this is something you would like. And he's jumping very, very high right now. Uh, if you guys were making a space game, maybe you would, uh, maybe that's what you'd want to do. Uh, but I don't want anything this floaty. So what we're going to take a look at is a couple of the environmental variables uh, that you have associated um, with, uh, with uh, Unity. All right, let's go into here into, is it file? No, it's under edit. It's under project settings, and it should be physics 2D. Um, let me make sure it's here, because I could be wrong. Velocity, default, oh, I'm not too low. Gravity, here it is. Okay, so uh, I'm going to change my gravity. Um, this is a, this is a uh, platformer. It is a 2D platformer. It is kind of arcadey. I want uh, this character to be very responsive. I don't want floaty. It's it's supposed to be on a planet, um, and this is actually the this is actually the appropriate number for gravity. Negative um, nine point eight uh, one meters per second um, is the uh, appropriate uh, gravity. But I don't want that. I'm going to change this to a much higher value to make it a much um, sharper uh, slowdown and a much sharper uh, uh, drop. All right. So let's let's try thirty. This is a complete guess. Uh, do I have to say save in here? Uh, no, I guess not. Uh, so I'm now going to try playing again and see what we get. All right, he fell much quicker. He does not jump anywhere near as high, all right? And he falls much quicker as well, which is what we're looking for. I, I don't like how high he's jumping now. I want him to jump a little higher, so let's go back to our character. This is what you guys are going to have to do with yours. You have to go through and adjust these values. Let's try it at uh, 250. Adjust your values to something you like falls much, ni much nicer there. I don't mind that. That jump is the right height. So 250 looks looks pretty good to me. All right. 
and you guys can adjust that value later on based on uh, based on the the objects you're creating as uh, obstacles and the enemies and everything else uh, that should be fine I think 250 looks pretty good all right guys that's it that's our code our character now runs jumps watch what happens when he falls oh fall and he falls off so I'm gonna stop that because we don't destroy him in any way um, that's how it's supposed to work if the character falls so from here watch what happens right away he starts falling and boom hits the ground immediately goes into the land jumps and immediately goes into the land that is all working exactly as it should the code almost no code to it at all you guys you saw how easy that was almost no code at all so if you guys liked that episode, and I'm hoping you did because we're moving along really, really well now. If you liked that episode, let me know with a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. It lets me know if I've done something wrong. If you guys give me a thumbs down, then please just let me know why. Let me know in the comments why. And I'm going to make adjustments. I'm going to make changes to help you guys better understand. All right? Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below. And if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.